Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achana. Welcome to episode 31 of Game Programming. So on episode 30, last time, we took a look at actually, um, I keep opening the game as if we've changed anything, but we haven't. Um, well, we have really. We've done the most important part and that's, the, that's like the behind the scenes work. Um, now, what we did last time was we basically used this render method in the grass tile class to actually render a tile, to, you know, to the screen, to basically just apply it. We haven't actually rendered anything physically to the screen yet, but we've we've laid down the, the groundwork, the framework for it. Um, and that's, that's really important. Now, I, I know that a lot of you guys are actually wondering, you know, we haven't actually changed anything in the game for like quite a few episodes. Um, the reason is, guys, like, it, this is what this is what game programming looks like. Like it's not like you write one line of code, you you know you hit Control S, you launch up the game, and it's completely different. There's like hundreds of lines of code that get actually get written before you see a visible change in the game. Um, that's that's just the case. So I'm sorry if you guys want to see instant changes, then maybe this isn't for you. But um, you know that that's just the way the games are made. You know you can't just expect to see a change every every like every method or so it takes it takes a lot more than that um especially you know when, when we're trying to actually make a game like purposefully not trying to just animate something on the screen um because if you if you were doing that you'd, you'd have you'd have a lot of changes going on but um yeah so this time uh we're actually going to take a look at how the level is going to decide which tiles are going to get rendered so there's a render there's a render class here so not class method. There's a random method here in the level class. Now, uh, make note of this. We're not in the random level class at extends level. We are in the parent class. We're in the, the we're in the super class. We're in the um we're in the level class. All right. Now over here in this in this random method, we're actually going to write code in here, um because the way that random levels are going to get rendered is exactly the same as non-random levels going to get rendered. Right. We just have to get different tiles basically. Or in in one case, we need we need to render. We need to actually generate the level, and, but in another case, we uh, we've already got a level, well, and we're just loading it from a file. But the way that the tiles actually get, you know, drawn on the screen, that's not going to change. So over here in our render method, we're going to start typing some code. So how is this going to work? Um, basically, think of it this way, right? We need we need a way to sort of be like, all right, we're going to start from rendering this tile. On the x-axis, we're going to render all the tiles until we hit the edge of the screen. And on the y-axis, we're sort of all going to do the same thing. We're going to hit all the tiles until we render the, the bottom right corner. So in other words, it's going from the top left to the bottom right corner. And it's rendering all the tiles in between. So we actually need to tell the computer, we actually need to tell um, you know, our software here um, which tiles need to get rendered. Okay? And we're sort of going to do that using corner pins. Now, if you don't know what corner pins are... Um, Basically, corner pins are, you know, pins in the corner. They're sort of like coordinates of the co of each of the corners. So what we need to do here is actually find the the two corners, and you know, thus we can we can we can calculate um, which tiles actually need to get rendered because when 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 we sort of move our view, obviously that changes. Now in this case, it's not really apparent because. Obviously, we just we just got like as many tiles as fit on the screen, and then just this void, this blackness around it. Um, <clears throat> but in a, in a full map, you know, obviously there'd be different parts of the map. So in other words, what we're trying to do is kind of create variables, create four different variables: one for the x value of this, one for the y value of this, and one for the x value of this, and one for the y value of this. Because um, and we can actually, even if we wanted to, we could sort of combine them them both to create um specific ones, but we, we sort of need four variables just to define that. Okay. So, um, let's just write those variables now. So I'm going to call them, you know, what they're traditionally called. And that is like, you know, X zero and then X one and then Y zero and Y one. So basically the first X, uh, variable, which is X zero, it's going to refer to the, the, the inmost X. So that might be a bit hard to understand. So I'll just open the game and show you. Um, X zero is going to refer to, and remember, we're only dealing with the X axis right now, not the Y axis. So it's like, it's like a vertical line that we're dealing with. Like a vertical, if you do maths, it's like a vertical asymptote, right? Think, think of it that way. Uh, a vertical asymptote is vertical, but the equation to it is X equals, you know, something. Um, not Y equals, because that would be horizontal. Um, but X, um, and also get used to me mentioning a lot of math terms, because game programming is all about maths. Um, <clears throat> so this vertical line here 
X0 is going to be legitimately at the zero point. Now remember, it's not always going to be zero. It's going to be the, the zero most coordinate. Um, that, that might be a bit hard to understand, but what I mean is it's going to be the, the left side of the screen. All right, so wh wherever what we're up to in the map, obviously if I move it this way, it's gonna change, but that, this, this area right over here, um, that will be X zero. That's sort of where we start rendering X. Um, and yeah, so let's just, I'll just keep the game, the game minimized as I type this, whoops. All right, so what is X zero gonna equal? X zero is simply going to equal X scroll, but it's not just gonna equal X scroll, it's gonna equal X scroll, shifted right four. Now you guys might be like, what? Why is it shifted right four? Now remember, shifted right four is the same as divided by 16. So why, oh God. I just hit control W so it closed the tab. Uh, where were we? Level, sorry about that guys. I, uh, there you go. So um, wh why are we dividing by 16? So remember 16 is the size of our tiles, right? Um, and the reason we're dividing it by 16 is because we sort of want to, we want to, we, we sort of want to deal at a pixel level, not a, not a, um, what do we call it? Not, not, not a tile level, right? We want to, we want to be dealing with, um, pixel level. If we don't, if we don't divide it by 16, what's going to happen is it's going to treat one value as, as, you know, one tile. And what's going to happen there is, hang on. I think it's the other way around. I always get confused by this. Divided by 16 would be making it smaller. Yes, yeah, sorry guys, my bad. So, oh God. Um, <laughs> sorry, this always confuses me, um, but it's not hard to, to, to you know, to diagnose. Um, the, the thing is, okay, obviously divided by 16 is actually doing like the opposite of what you think it might be doing because of what I think it might be doing. Uh, divided by 16 is actually making less values. So in other words, we're dividing it into tiles instead of into pixels. Um, so what's happening is, uh, where is my console? Uh, window, sorry guys, let me just fix this up. New computer, gotta, gotta close that console. Let's just put it over here. And now we can terminate it. No, it's not running. All right, so, um, divided by 16, what that's doing is, is actually splitting, up, splitting it up into individual tiles. Now, this X scroll variable, that's going to be where our player is. As, as you know, players can be halfway through tiles. Players, players aren't being snapped to tiles, right? They can be in between tiles, they can be anywhere because they're dealing with pixel precision, as I like to call it. Now, when we render tiles, we wanna be dealing with tile precision because we wanna know exactly which tile needs to get rendered and which tile is already out of the render um, distance, I guess you call it. Obviously this is in 3D, so it's not like render distance, but you know what I mean. So, um, in order to, in order to actually define tiles, we need to be dealing with tiles as a single number. So in other words, this tile right here might be zero. This tile right here might be six. One, two, three, four, five. five. Sorry, my bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, these tiles, these tiles all have numbers attached to them. We don't, we don't want to be, we don't want to be dealing with pixels because if we didn't divide it by 16, obviously instead of getting like one over here, we'd get 16. And then we go 32, you know, 32, 48, 64, and et cetera, et cetera, um, until, it, until it, you know, gets to, gets to the end. And that's a huge number. And we don't want to have to do that because when, when we actually retrieve our specific tiles, there's no need for us to be dealing with such huge numbers. Because remember, tiles can only be 16 pixels at the, well, at the moment. But the point is, tiles are 16 pixels wide. So in other words, we identify tiles by simply saying, this is the tile at coordinate, um, I don't know, one comma two, right? That would be right here. We don't, we don't deal with it by saying that's the tile at, at coordinate 16 comma 36, or sorry, 30 to 32. You know, we, we don't deal with it that way. We deal with it the simple way because, well, it's simple and there's no point in us doing that. That's why we divide it by 16. So in other words, we're jumping from pixel precision to tile precision by dividing our X scroll variable by, uh, by 16. Um, and again, we are using a bitwise operator just because it's a lot faster. Um, now, x1 will be like the other side. So in other words, over here I showed you guys that x0 was the leftmost uh, vertical asymptote, I guess. And uh, this will be the rightmost vertical asymptote. So as you can imagine, what will this be, right? What will x1 be? So x scroll is the, is the, the you know, the leftmost. Um, so then what's the rightmost? Now the rightmost would obviously be X scroll, you know, plus the width of this little screen. So in other words, uh, let me just terminate that. Whoa, my screen just flashed. Um, so 
uh, it would simply be, right, X scroll and plus like the height of our screen, uh, sorry, the width of our screen. Now, how do we find out the width of our screen? Well, in this screen class, we've conveniently, I control clicked on it. Um, in the screen class, we've conveniently got a width variable and a height variable, which is actually private for some reason. So we'll make them public. I, I always start sort of, when, when I'm programming, I always start off with making things public. Sorry, it's the opposite thing there. Um, I always start off with making things private and then I sort of change them to public because um, if, if, if they're not public, you know, you don't want to confuse yourself by making them public, even though you won't be using them in, in other classes. But in this case, we are making them public. So the screen class, we made the width and height variables public, note to self. Um, all right, so now we can access it. So we've, we've, we've conveniently got these, these variables here, which actually keep track of actually how wide and how high our screen is. So what we can do is simply go X scroll plus screen dot width, right? And then of course we need to divide it by, oops, we need to also divide it by four. Now, obviously the problem here is it's going to actually do this operation first. Um, actually, I don't think it will. Um, because I think bitwise operators are actually applied after addition operators. I'm not sure why, but I think they are. But anyway, just to be safe, we'll just put brackets around this so it does this first and then divides it by 16, thus, thus creating an entire precision. And again, as you know, I was talking I was two episodes ago, I think it was, about how um, what, whatever you do in X sort of gets done for Y because we're dealing in two dimensions. So the same thing, right? Uh, y0 is literally going to be the same as that and Y1 is going to be the bottom corner or the bottom plane, the bottom asymptote, um, bottom horizontal asymptote of our, of, of our window. So it's going to simply be Y scroll plus screen dot height. And of course, shifted right for some of the words divided by 16. And that is it. So these, these four variables are very important because they define the render region of our screen. All right. Very, very important. And, you know, next time we'll move on to actually setting this, this, this offset correctly to our screen class. And, and yeah, and we'll get, we'll get on with this. So until then guys, thanks for watching. Please hit the like button. If you enjoyed the video, give it a favorite and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.